What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is the series where I go into great detail with all of the stats of every one of the weapons in Black Ops Cold War. And in today's episode, we're going to be covering the brand new SMG that just came today with Season 1, and this is the MAC-10. And kicking it off, as always, let's have a look at our damage profile, which is 27, 24, 22, which means this is going to be a 6 or 7 shot kill in core game modes. It's a very, very low damage gun. Also, it's worth noting that it will always be a 2 shot kill in hardcore. You can't get a 1 shot kill with this unless you're hitting headshots or unless you're using the barrel that slightly boosts your damage. Speaking of headshots, we do get a standard headshot multiplier at 1.4, and this means up close you need two headshots mixed in with body shots in order for it to help, one headshot mixed in with body shots at mid-range in order for it to help, and then at the longer ranges you need three headshots mixed in with body shots, and therefore it's not really practical at longer ranges, but up close it's somewhat reasonable to be going for headshots. As for a rate of fire, this is 1,111 rounds per minute, which is insanely fast. This is the fastest firing gun in the game currently. And what this means is, in our 6 shot kill range up close, our time to kill potential is 270 milliseconds, which is very fast for this game. It's still beat out by the AK-74U, but it is a little bit faster killing than the MP5 even, so definitely very competitive in the time to kill department. It's also worth noting, if you manage to land those two headshots up close mixed in with body shots and get a 5 shot kill, your time to kill potential is 216 milliseconds, which is extremely fast for this game. Next up, taking a look at our bullet velocity, the MAC-10 has a very slow bullet velocity at 200 meters per second, which is tied for being the slowest in the SMG category, so it's really going to struggle with longer ranges against moving targets unless you boost this value. And next up, let's have a look at our ranges. As you can see here, this is not one of the strengths of the MAC-10. That 6-shot kill range is only about 11 meters, which isn't very far at all. This SMG is definitely designed for super close quarters for the most part. I should also mention that even with the barrel attachments that boost your damage range, you still don't get a massive increase here, so you just kind of have to accept with this gun that damage range isn't going to be one of its strengths. As for hardcore, like I said earlier, this is always going to be a two-shot kill unless you manage to land a headshot, or if you're using the last barrel, the task force barrel that boosts your damage, this will give you an 11 meter one-shot kill range in hardcore modes. But next up, let's have a look at our hip fire, and as you can see here, it's got very standard hip fire for the SMG category, and therefore that means it's actually quite solid at hip firing up close. Then I want to have a look at the idle sway, which I was very surprised to see. There is very little idle sway for an SMG. The sights don't move much at all when you're aiming down sight, which is great. Then when it comes to recoil, you can see here there is a lot of vertical recoil, and this is mainly just due to that fire rate. So it's got way more recoil than any of the other SMGs in the game. However, it is almost straight vertical recoil. There's not much side-to-side -side bounce, and therefore, in the actual game itself, I personally find that it's not that bad to try and control the recoil for this. It's obviously still not going to excel at long ranges, but it is somewhat usable if you've got good recoil control. Moving on, our aim down sight time is pretty standard for SMGs at 275 milliseconds, and it's the same story with our sprint out time. Our experience sprint out time is 250 milliseconds, which again, is standard for SMGs. Then let's get into our reload time, and our reload add time is actually the fastest in the SMG category at 1.42 seconds. And then we have all of the other reload times for the different magazines. You can see some of them really cut it down all the way down to 0.87 seconds, which is extremely fast. But finally, for the base stats on this gun, we've got our movement speeds, which are all standard for the SMG category. We've got a 100% base movement speed, a great sprint movement speed as well, and our aim down sight movement is also solid. So make sure you're strafing in those gunfights while using this gun. And with that, it's now time to move into the strengths and weaknesses of the MAC-10. And its strengths are obviously its time to kill potential. This is an awesome time to kill potential. It kills very, very fast. And on top of this, that extremely fast fire rate is very forgiving. If you miss a couple bullets here or there, it's not going to punish you all that much with this gun because that next bullet is going to be coming out right away. Additionally, it is really nice to have the fastest reload time for the SMG category, especially with how fast you can burn through magazines with that super high fire rate. As for our weaknesses, the MAC-10 has really high recoil, it's also a super low damage gun and doesn't have very good ranges, so you do have to be putting a lot of shots down range to kill your targets. And then finally, it has an extremely slow bullet velocity, and this is just another thing that sort of solidifies the fact that this gun is not designed for longer range fights. Now, before we get into some great class setups with this gun, I just wanted to talk a bit about that 5.9 inch Task Force barrel, which is the one that boosts our damage. And with this, it only boosts our damage in the close range situations from 27 up to 28. 
So in core game modes, this really changes nothing at all, except for the fact that it adds so much recoil. I don't know if I've ever seen a gun in Call of Duty with this much recoil before. So stay away from this barrel. The only argument I could see for using this barrel is in hardcore modes. It does give you a short one-shot kill potential. But with the rate of fire of this gun, you're probably better off just landing those two shots instead. So finally, it's time to get into some great attachment combinations and example class setups. And I played around in custom games with this a bunch to try and get our recoil and our handling and everything just right. And this first class setup is my stealthy flanking sort of class setup with this. So we are going to be using the agency suppressor so I can stay off the radar and I get a little bit of vertical recoil control, which is definitely helpful with this gun. And really, even though it reduces your effective damage range, it's not that big of a deal because it's not like this has a great damage range in the first place. And the difference between six and seven shots to kill isn't that high with this really fast rate of fire. But after that, we've got the Ranger Barrel, which significantly boosts our bullet velocity, the Steady Aim Laser to help with our hip fire a little bit, the Field Agent Grip, which is just going to help us even more with our vertical recoil, and then on top of that, it's going to cut down on that little bit of horizontal recoil we have, so it's going to be quite easy to control. And then finally, we have the Vandal Speed Loader, which just reloads so, so fast, and it's great for this gun. But taking this one into an example class setup, we've got the 1911 as our secondary, with a suppressor on there, of course. We've got the stim shot, Semtex Grenade, as well as the Field Mic, especially after this update. The Field Mic is quite a bit more powerful because it will be picking up all Ninja users now. Then for our perks, we've got Perk Greed, which I use on most of my classes. And with this, we've got Flak Jacket and Engineer. The reason I switched to Engineer instead of using Tac Mask is because those field mics are now a lot more scary as somebody that uses Ninja and Ghost on my class setup. So it helps me find those field mics more effectively. Additionally, we've got Assassin on here and Scavenger. Scavenger is a bit of a key because you are going to burn through ammo very, very quickly. So that's the first one, which is great for flanking and staying off the radar. The next one is all about being right up in the enemy's face and being as loud as possible. And this one's mainly designed around hip fire as well. So with this, we've got the 6.1 inch reinforced barrel. We've got the 5 milliwatt laser, so our hip fire spread is quite tight. The bruiser grip, which helps just speed up a bunch of our movement speed values, which is great so we can get around the map as fast as possible. Then we've got the Salvo 53 round fast mag, so we get a ton of ammo to hip fire spray with, and also we reload it very, very quickly. We don't have to worry about it hurting our aim down sight time, since this is primarily a hip fire build. And then finally, the wire stock, which just helps a little bit with our sprint out time. Now, taking this one into an example class setup, I'll fully admit this is a just for fun and messing around sort of class setup. It's not a super competitive setup, but it is fun. With this, we got the Magnum as our secondary with dual wield, of course. So we got those dual Magnums just to stick to the theme of hip firing everything. We've got a smoke grenade, which allows us to close that distance a lot more effectively to get close to our enemies, which is also nice. A tomahawk, just because this is just for fun and tomahawks are quite fun. The jammer, so with a good key placement, you can really disorient your enemies there and they won't be seeing you firing on the minimap when you don't have a suppressor equipped here. Then for perks, we're once again using perk greed. We've got flak jacket, tack mask, tracker, which is going to help us when we're in the smoke and also just help us in general finding enemies. Scavenger, once again, still very important with this gun because we're burning through ammo quite quickly. And then finally, we have Gung Ho as well as Ninja. Now, it is worth noting, a lot of people have been asking, Gung Ho doesn't actually help your sprint out time in this game. It allows you to fire while sprinting. However, when you pull the trigger as you're sprinting, you still have to complete that sprint out time before the gun will fire. Having said that, though, it does help you hip fire while still sprinting, which is a great benefit for a hip fire build. And that's why we're using it on this setup. And with that, that's going to wrap it up for today's gun guide on the MAC-10 SMG. Personally, I'm quite happy with the addition of this gun. It's nice that it stands out from the rest of the SMGs as something completely different. And so far, even with my limited playtime with it, I'm having a really good time and I quite enjoy using this gun. Of course, that is just my opinion. I'd like to know in the comment section below. What are you guys thinking about the MAC-10 so far in Black Ops Cold War? Do you think it's overpowered, underpowered, or it's just balanced nicely with the rest of the guns? Just let me know those thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.